Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Lily Riley and I'm back with a book that I was looking forward to reading just because of the book title and the cover and I was not disappointed. I'm talking about The Invisible Life of Adi Larue by V. E. Schwab and I would say it's a fairy tale for adults. It's about the life of Adi Larue who makes a pact with the devil on her wedding day. Let's start with the bullet points. The Invisible Life of Adi Larue by V. E. Schwab is a historical fantasy novel for readers 14 and up. The book was published in October 2020 by Tor Books. It has 448 pages and the reading time is approximately eight and a half hours. Similar books are The Book of Lost Things by John Connolly or The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid or Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. This to the bullet points. Now I would like to introduce you briefly the author, Victoria Evelyn Schwab. The British-American author V. E. Schwab was born 1987 and grew up in Nashville, the home of country music. She studied English and communication design and art history at St. Louis University. She can be found either in Nashville or in France where her family lives or in Edinburgh. You might run into her anywhere else in the world though because she loves to travel and be outside when the weather is nice. The Slytherin devotee spends her time watching TV and movies and enjoys black chocolate and a good bourbon. And look at these tattoos, I love them. For young adults, she mainly writes under the name Victoria Schwab. For adult novels, she needs V.E. Schwab. Not a big difference. <laughs> anyway, she is number one New York Times and indie bestseller author of over a dozen books, including the 2013 Vicious and Shadow of Magic series about world wanderer Kell and thief Leela Bard and has since become one of the greats in international fantasy literature. Her books have been translated into over a dozen languages. This about the author, let's go to the story. We follow Adeline Larue who was born 1691 in the French village Vieux sur Sarthe. She is smart, a stubborn free spirit and a dreamer who still wants to see much of the world. That's why Adi, now 23, looks forward with dread to her wedding with Roger, a boy from the village. From her friend Estelle she has heard about ancient gods she can pray to, but never after nightfall because then the dark gods answer. Then her wedding day arrives and Addie runs away, away from her life that seems like a prison to her and runs into the forest, not realizing that the sun has already set when she calls the ancient gods for help. Addie would do anything to be free. Then a shadow appears in the form of her dream man. And Addie also disregards Estelle's warning that she must choose her words carefully as she asks for freedom without rules and unlimited time. In desperation, Addie offers the shadow her soul if she no longer wants to live and the pact is sealed. From now on, nothing is the same anymore. Addie has unlimited time. She does not age and nothing can harm her but her words were inaccurate. Absolute freedom in her case means no one can remember her once they can no longer see her, out of sight, out of mind. And she also cannot pronounce her own name, nor can she write anything down. Addie does meet a lot of people, but everyone she loves forgets her. Addie, on the other hand, can remember everything she has experienced and her life becomes lonely, so lonely. Every trace of her disappears, even the footprints in the snow. She finds the only way to leave something behind in art because, as she says, ideas are more persistent than memories. 
So she becomes the muse, the inspiration, the model with the seven freckles in the shape of a constellation for the artists. And so she still manages over 300 years to leave something of herself behind. The woman who appears again and again in the works of art of different eras to be recognized only by the seven freckles. Again and again the shadow, or you can call him the devil, she calls him Luc, he appears and asks whether now she wants to leave her soul to him. It's a cat and mouse game and Addie often wavers, but she's ultimately too stubborn and will not let him win because self-determination is the only thing she has left. Addie Larue becomes a survivor she has no fixed home and out of necessity she becomes a thief. Then, in the year 2014 in New York, while trying to steal a book from a bookstore, she encounters Henry Strauss and he can remember her. That's everything I'm going to tell you about the story. Let's move on to my impression. The story is written in the present tense personal form and does not run chronologically. We begin with the present time and I was dying to know why Addie became the way she is. That's why here the alternating chapters present and past did not bother me at all. I did not fall out of rhythm and the division into seven parts brought order to it. The pace was just right. I liked how I could dive into the different eras, was there just before the French Revolution, wars, diseases, countries, art. For example, Addy meets Voltaire, Beethoven, Sinatra, and this brought reality into the story, even though it's a magical story. And I found this is super fantasy, not in a classic sense, but different, special, not like I've encountered it before in this combination. Luke the Shadow is the only one who keeps showing up. He has known Addy over the centuries and remembers her. And you feel with her the conflict she experiences when she's recognized by Luke and hears her name especially since he takes the form of her dream man, but at the same time, anger at him rages inside her. And this relationship is very interesting to say the least, and it has something disreputable about it, but I don't want to go too deep into details. Then themes of various orientations of love are addressed in this story, which I find very nice. With a meeting with Henry, a beautiful love story unfolds and since he carries a secret with him, this love has something mysterious. It is as if V. E. Schwab playfully switches between different genres without you even noticing. All of this is written in an easy to read manner without too much flourish but still with a lot of feeling. What I didn't like as much was the ending. Of course, I was curious, but I found it a bit contrived. I would have liked it differently. But yeah, this is my impression. Let's go to the conclusion. The Invisible Life of Adi Larue is a magical romance novel about a woman who does not want to be forgotten. It's about being remembered, sharing common experiences and inside jokes with someone it's about living in a moment, but most of all, it's about loneliness. I really loved this story and I was a little sad when it ended because I think Addy could have told much more, I'm sure. But as they say, you should stop when it's at its best. Addy has left a mark on me and I will not forget her. This book was the first but certainly not the last I've read by V.E. Schwab. I love this author and can only highly recommend this particular book to everyone. Yeah, well, thanks for watching so far. I really appreciate it. And if you like this video, you might also like The Girl You Left Behind by Jojo Moyes. I picked it out just for you. Well then, see you next time. Bye.